Don't forget to check out and grab your copy of our two newly released books, Football, A Love Story, and What Did Football Teach Me? These books feature over 100 stories from current and former coaches, players, executives, and entertainers from across the football landscape describing what got them involved in the game, what they love about it, and what life lessons the game taught them. You can find your copy or order your copy from our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. If you like our video content and want to show support for Football Game Plan, stop by our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash football game plan and don't hesitate to drop a little something something in the tip jar it could be one five or ever amount you would like to donate to football game plan every little bit helps and we definitely appreciate your support Checking in at number 16 is Matt Soltez of East Stroudsburg, and I was able to see him live this year versus LIU Post, and I came away highly impressed with his toughness. He's a guy that can attack anywhere on the football field with both his arm as well as his legs, and he loves to work touchdown to check down. You have to like that about his game. Now, he's a streaky player that is a reckless runner and tends to spot throw a lot, so he'll have to find that level of consistency moving forward. Jeff Driscoll out of Louisiana Tech got better as he went from Gainesville to Ruston to play with the Bulldogs. He has a very strong arm that can force you to defend the entire field. I also believe he's a really good athlete and has above average deep ball capabilities, and he has the mental toughness that you want at the position. Now, his accuracy and placement are a bit inconsistent, and will he continue to get better? That's the biggest question you have because he got better going from Florida to Louisiana Tech, but why did it take so long is the biggest issue. He's streaky. He tends to lock in on wide receivers. And I also think he's questionable versus the Blitz. But again, this is a guy that did get better this season, remarkably better, and reminds me a lot of Josh McCown. Marquise Williams out of North Carolina is a guy that had a very productive career for the Tar Heels. He attacks zone coverages very well. I also think he does a great job in attacking outside the numbers. He gets great velocity on his passes, but I do think he has a questionable deep ball and at times he tends to do too much. You have to realize as a quarterback, you can live to play another down, keep your offense on pace. There's nothing wrong with the incomplete pass. He also provides a threat as a runner and is not afraid to make a stick throw, and he is very efficient. But I would like to see him be a little bit better in the anticipation department, but I do compare his game to E.J. Manuel of the Buffalo Bills. Kevin Hogan out of Stanford, in my opinion, is a Ryan Fitzpatrick clone. He has the toughness that you want at the position. He gets really good velocity on in-breaking routes and seam throws and has an above-average deep ball, but he's streaky. He's a see-it-throw-it type of a passer, more of a thrower than a passer, and at times he will predetermine and lock in on wide receivers. And despite that good velocity, I don't think he has the strongest of arms and he has the spotty intermediate placement in the passing game, but he does show the ability to make things happen with his legs. He was productive all three years starting at Stanford, and he's a fearless competitor. I've evaluated Keenan Reynolds out of Navy as a quarterback and not as a running back or wide receiver. In my opinion, he should stay at quarterback because he does see the field particularly well. He has a compact delivery, which maximizes velocity on his throws, and he has above average accuracy. Now, he doesn't have the experience in the passing game, and I think he has to know when and where to take steam up off the ball because a lot of times he tends to throw fastball, which affects your placement and accuracy, and he can be a little too trusting of his arm, but he does protect the football. He has really good mobility, obviously, and he throws well on the move, and I love how he is able to keep his eyes downfield. If I was to compare his game to a quarterback, it would be Pat White, who recently played for the Edmonton Eskimos. I was able to broadcast two of Kyle Nolan's games this season at Georgetown. I think he still has some upside. At 6'6", 230, Nolan is a very good athlete that throws well on the move, and I liken his game to Matt Schaub in the sense that he's good on bootlegs, waggles, and also operating off play action. Now, his process has to quicken up, and he has to become much better at throwing with anticipation, but Nolan has gotten better each and every season on the hill, and I think he will find his way on an NFL roster. Blake Fronapple out of UMass is a guy I was able to see twice live, once last season versus Buffalo, and this year at the East-West Shrine game. He can make any bucket throw on a football field. He shows good accuracy and touch going vertical and has solid footwork and mechanics. And I think he also has good anticipation. Now, his arm may not be the strongest, and he struggles to drive the football over the middle of the field, You and he won't risk it in a window that isn't wide enough. So that's something I think he's going to have to work on 
when he gets to the next level. I think also when making a stick throw, he tends to stop receivers in their tracks. So that shows you the velocity is not where it needs to be. But again, very productive player coming out of the Mid-American Conference. In two live viewings this season, one versus Cornell and the other versus Penn, I saw two different Morgan Roberts at quarterback for Yale. I think that the truth lies somewhere right in the middle. Roberts has a quick release, good athleticism, and gets good placement on his passes. Now, he's a really good rhythm passer, but the streakiness a la Mark Sanchez, who I compare his game to, can get him into trouble. Now, he has to become or has to be able to see the field a little bit better as he makes that transition into the NFL. Everett Golson out of Florida State reminds me a lot of Brian Hoyer. He has the escapability that you want. He's money on in-breaking routes, does a solid job on the move, but he's streaky and can be careless with the football, with fumbles, and also the untimely interceptions. And I also believe his deep ball accuracy in the passing game is spotty at best. However, he does excel in the short to intermediate passing game, so he can be effective for your offense. And I also like the toughness and shows good situational awareness. I'm a big fan of Jonathan Williams' game out of Grambling. He has a live arm. He throws all of the deep routes extremely well, the fades, the flag routes, your skinny posts, your seams, and also your post patterns. He also makes good bucket throws. I think he has escapability to succeed both in the NFL and also in the CFL. Now, he will take some unnecessary risk with the football. That's partly because he's a gunslinger and has that strong arm. He also holds the ball a little bit long because he's waiting for the big play. You see the common theme here. Guys have to understand it's okay to live to play another down. But he does have above average throwing ability on the move. And he also has a very compact delivery, which helps him maximize those opportunities for velocity and arm strength on those deeper throws. His game overall reminds me a lot of Darian Durant, formerly of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Trey Roberson is another interesting case because in 2014, he put together an outstanding season, helping Illinois State get to their first ever FCS title game in program history, and then had a lot of struggles this past season. Now, Roberson really has good instincts and can feel the rush very well. He also has above average arm strength and mobility, and the placement tends to run hot and cold and is very inconsistent in keeping proper technique all the time. Now, there's a lot of good tape on Roberson, but the inconsistent 2015 film is what has him here in our rankings. I'm a big fan of Marcus Fuller's game. The 5'11", 205-pound signal caller from Brown is yet another Ivy League quarterback that finds himself in our prospect rankings. Fuller has a strong arm and is very good in the intermediate and deep game. He also has really good athleticism who is capable of being accurate throwing on the move. Now, the streakiness is an issue for Fuller. At times, he could be a see-it-throw-it type of a quarterback, and that gets him into a lot of trouble. But I do think he can excel as a CFL quarterback. It reminds me a lot of Mike Riley of the Edmonton Eskimos. Brandon Dowdy out of Western Kentucky was a highly productive player for the Hilltoppers throughout the course of his career. I think he throws well on the move and gets good velocity when throwing on the move. Now, his pocket presence and his placement and his inability to attack deep over the middle of the field, I think all have to improve as he makes a jump to the NFL. I think his game overall compares favorably to Landry Jones of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Another very talented small college quarterback prospect, this time coming from the Division II ranks, Jason Vanderlaan out of Ferris State, a two-time Harlan Hill Trophy Award winner, which is given to the top player in Division II, which is the equivalent to the Heisman Trophy. He was highly productive at Ferris State, a dual-threat player. He's a strong runner. He won't try to just avoid you. He will also try to run you over. And he takes really good risk in the passing game and moves the chains, which is exactly what you want. From your quarterback now i don't think he has the strongest of arms he tends to be a spot thrower so that makes his placement a little bit questionable and i think he also struggles to drive the football outside of the numbers but he's good on a short and in breaking routes which gives you a little bit of flexibility once you get inside the red zone again very productive player that i would think compares to jake locker John Gibbs Jr. out of Alcorn State at 6'6", 220 is a guy that came into the season with a lot of fanfare and a lot of pub, but his senior campaign was cut short early due to injury. But this is a guy, when you analyze his 2014 film, he has really good upside. He has the mobility that you want at the position. I think he also understands situational football. I was very impressed with that area when I analyzed his game. Now, his arm strength, I don't think it's where it needs to be. Placement tends to be spotty on shorter throws. 
and his process has to be quicker. I think he can get a little bit too relaxed with his mechanics and that affects his accuracy. But overall, I think he's very solid in the intermediate game and I would compare his game to Brandon Bridge of the Montreal Alouettes. Brandon Allen out of Arkansas is a gamer. I was able to see this up close and personal at the Senior Bowl this season. I think he has the streakiness that'll frustrate both coaches and fans alike. Now, Allen can push the ball anywhere he wants to on the football field, and he's really good in an up-tempo, no-huddle type of an offense. I think he's also a very good athlete and can do a lot of damage on the ground, but the hot and cold Jekyll and Hyde part of his game has to straighten out if he wants to stick as a pro. Quentin Williams out of Bethune-Cookman is an intriguing prospect in this year's draft class. He was the FCS leader in efficiency this past season and had a solid postseason performance in the inaugural Tropic Bowl down in Miami versus FBS opponents. Williams can make all of the throws necessary on the football field, but at times he's a little hesitant to pull the trigger. And I do think there is some development left in this game, which tells you he has upside that's worthy of a pro quarterback coach's interest. Dreyfus Jackson out of Rice rounds out our top quarterback prospect rankings for the 2016 class, and Jackson was an extremely productive player for the Rice Owls, and I think he has underrated field vision and above-average mobility. A lot of times that mobility can be a double-edged sword as it'll get him into some trouble. I think his placement and his accuracy can be inconsistent to put it at best. He's going to have to become a little bit more consistent in that area. Right now, I will compare his game to B.J. Daniels, a guy that you can bring along slowly in the preseason, allow him to get a little bit more consistent, and then he'll be ready to contribute as a number two down the line. <laughs>